No. <laughs> Good observation. In this case, uh, flighting was in fact a form of verbal dueling common among Germanic cultures, wherein two speakers uh, use wit and poetry to mercilessly mock one another. The tradition goes back to at least the fifth century. Uh, examples are found predominantly in Norse and Anglo-Saxon literature. Uh, I, I should say the side note, there, there's plenty of other examples of different cultures. Uh, one notable example, in fact, Germanic, is actually Beowulf. There's a scene early on where Beowulf comes to King Hrothgar's court, and a member of Hrothgar's court uh, engages in flight with Beowulf, questioning his competence and bravery, uh, only to be quite literally dissed out of the story. <laughs> in fact, it's hinted by Beowulf the, the, the poem of the person, that there, there might have been a court physician whose sole purpose was to initiate flight as needed, basically to check guests when they come in. Uh, another example, there's an entire poem in the Edda where Thor engages in flighting with a uh, Rip Boatman, Barony, over his various deeds. There's one where Loki shows up and just engages flighting with every other god in Asgard. Uh, Later on, you see examples of Shakespeare. So, so this is a quite a genre that lasted well over a thousand years. I'll give a quick side note on Germanic poetry in particular. Until the 15th century or so, Germanic cultures used a style of verse that relied on alliteration rather than end rhyme. Uh, each line of the poem is broken into two halves, uh, separated by what's called the sejuro, which is just a brief pause. And each side of the, uh, the line can have a different meter. Uh, but each side is linked by alliteration, uh, so it's a little more freedom than certain other styles, like sonnets, for example, but still a very well-regulated uh, form. Uh, so what you're all thinking, what, what does this have to do with Scotch card? Well, I recently found out that flighting was incredibly popular in medieval Scotland up until the early Renaissance. Uh, the flight of this era had a reputation of being so vile and profane <laughs> that it was a major form of public entertainment, and governments would actually suspend profanity laws when flighting was going on because they enjoyed it so much. Uh, <clears throat> King James the Fourth and James the Fifth, at least. King James the Bible? No, uh, okay. perhaps. I'm not actually sure. Which James 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 <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I think this was a, a much earlier form of English. Uh, circa 1500. Uh, anyway, uh, King James IV and V both had documented court flighters for entertainment. And there was a famous flight performed in 1504. I'm a little shaky on that. It wasn't quite clear from the source. Uh, but it was performed in the court of James IV and contained the first use of shit as a personal insult. <laughs> uh, the, this this but flight... But it would be shite in this it, case. It, uh, perhaps. I, I, I don't know. I mean, this was 1500. The pronunciation might have been different, but maybe. It's Scotland. Yeah, it is Scotland. Uh, it is actually the only, uh, let's call it poetry, I know about that has been preserved solely because of how vile it is. <laughs> uh, Titled The Flighting of Dunbar and Kennedy, it has been described by scholars as just over 500 lines of filth. <laughs> and I plan on reading a few choice lines. If you have a weak stomach, you may want to leave. Yes? So is the joke the aristocrats divided <laughs> If two people were contributing and accusing each other of doing those things, yes. The really familiar with the aristocrats? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so be before, before I actually read it, there are a few things I'd like to point out, much like tasting notes. Uh, first, uh, Thank you, man. this is a translation. Uh, this was sort of performed in uh, Middle English. The, lang the English language was very difficult, or very different around 1500, which was, as we know, somewhere between two weeks and 400 years ago. Uh, so there, there will be a few words you do not know. Assume that they are a word for some castrated farm animal. <laughs> Second, uh, pay attention to the careful poetic construction of the piece. And third, note how this piece shows a hybridization of the alliterative forms of earlier Germanic poetry and the more modern end rounds. 
This is an extract from the flight of Dunbar and Kennedy. You can revel like the devil, but level and surrender. Thief or grief and mischief shall come courting. Gravel for grace, dog face, or I shall chase you all winter. Howl and yowl, owl, I shall foul your fame and fortune. Naked capon, fed and bred against a bitch's side, and like a mongrel criminal, no man sets aught by you. Cunt bit, sorry shit, worthless git, hardened hide, wasted weather, tawdry tether, evil adder, I defy you. So, as you can see, um, Flighting was a very nuanced and sober style of poetry. Uh, Scholars have also proposed that it is a direct predecessor to something the, the colonies call rap battles, <laughs> um, which is, of course, absurd. <laughs> this content is questionable. Is Scotland dramatically conquerable? Your literary libations show allegiance is lacking. You're deep in Hitler's library, doing his book stacking. Who sits and speaks some stationless hack? The arbiter is at hand to oppose this attack. I see a scotch in your snifter, or so you have said. I mark a tepid miasma. Mayhap some mojito instead? <laughs> Your arbitration's arbitrary. It's adolescent anarchy, a conceited and corrupted cesspool of crit and cum and pee. I rip rhymes in time with the rhythm of the earth. Paint pictures so pure, it gives poor blind men mirth. <laughs> Don't let me disrupt your daily gallon of beer, my dear master of conjecture. You've made the wrong wager here. You'll become a bookie's bitch when you bet on basketball. I voice your every vice, but one verse can't hold them all. Please. When I'm gambling gallantly, Greek God gather beside me. You sip a Shirley Temple and you sick up on your pink onesie. I win wenches and whiskey. Roll with me, you wealthy. I'm a gambling kraken. Scott's God, you should release me. <laughs> My dad's a doctor of destruction. Yours. <laughs> you should have served with just one daughter. You wonder why I don't get wasted? I drink whiskey like it's water. You're conspiring like Cromwell, committing cretinous capers. Let's find a field and fight this out. I'll flip you like a caper. You're a causation casualty. Committed the catastrophe as soon as you called your crap in front of me. Gazing round for a greater Thomas? Cause you're about to sob. He can't save you from this battle like he got you a job. <laughs> you're a filthy fop, and your fluid is floppy. The ladies love my fighting. They list yours as sloppy. You're a dirty, dastard dildo, and you delve in dusty caves. I'm not fond of you. can't stop me. You're just a creature to be slayed. Only Gerder history books could take Clyde to the ground. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Your skin is so smooth, you need a scrotum donation. <laughs> to try this, but you've taken enough of my time. I'm the illest flooding master. You're the imposter of rhyme. Oh.